Hello there ladies and gentlemen and however you may identify. Today we're going to be doing the Sarah Everard story about what happened at the vigil. Was it the police's fault? Was there actual activists that were there? Was it a case of it being a to and a from and so on and so on? Let's actually find out what actually happened, give an actual proper account of what happened and believe it or not, an actual honest interpretation and honest reporting from Sky News. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, and again, however you may identify, let's get into this tragic story that seems to be hijacked by every single political activist out there at the minute that's trying to push their own form of narrative, rather than actually the, the issues. Let's get into it, shall we? So, welcome back, and as you can tell, we are now going to be talking about the Sever Everard Vigil. So, what went wrong? So, let's get to the actual start and an in-depth look to what happened, shall we? So, as you can already see, there's quite a lot of people already at this point in time. So, let's have a look throughout the afternoon. So, throughout the afternoon, people leave tribute to Sarah at the bandstand in Clapham Common, near to the route she took home when she went missing. This was around about 4pm, around 200 people were gathered at the site. Remember, this is during peak COVID. You have people that are already not wearing masks. Let me just go back a little bit and see. You can see there's a lady there that's not wearing a mask. There is a gentleman over here that's not wearing a mask. There is a lady there that's not wearing a mask. Another gentleman there that's not wearing a mask. Another lady there that's not wearing a mask. A lady over there that doesn't seem to be wearing a mask. And I'm sure that there are others that are in and around the area that are not wearing masks. At this point in time, there's only two police officers over there in the corner that I can actually see that are there to monitor the vigil at this point. So... Seems to be all peaceful, but again, some restrictions, if you're into that, are being broken at this point in time. Now remember, if you are for restrictions, which by the way I would like to point out, I am, then you have to just be, you have to put them out equally. You have to make sure it's spread evenly and it applies to everyone evenly. There should not be special cases in this instance. So, let's carry on, shall we? So, before we get into the next bit, you can tell that there's already people that are not wearing masks. You have a gentleman here at the front that's definitely not wearing a mask, that even has his scarf down by his face at this moment in time, or down by his chin. Another gentleman over there that's not wearing a mask. Another gentleman there that's not wearing a mask. A lady over there that's not wearing a mask. Another gentleman or lady over there that's not wearing a mask. There is a whole group of men over there that are not wearing masks. Another female over there that's not wearing a mask. So on and so forth. You, you get the idea that at this point in time you have hundreds of people that are coming into Clapham Common that are there to pay tribute, possibly, that are not wearing masks. So already, even if it's not a case of a hostilities that may or may not happen later on, you have people that are in direct breach of the COVID restrictions and one of the main reasons why they, the vigil wasn't supposed to go ahead. So... Let's see what's going on. At around about 5.30pm, a steady stream of people head towards the bandstand. Helicopter footage shows about 10 police officers are scattered around the perimeter of the bandstand area. So you've got hundreds of people coming towards the bandstand and roughly 10 police. So let's say that you've got one police officer for every 10 people if you only have 100 people in there at that point in time. Remembering that at least 20 people were in there from about 4.30. So that's 20 per copper that the copper has to maintain, if anything was to kick off. Again, I'm not trying to build up any signs, I'm just trying to actually give an even kill of what actually happened. 
So, another man without a mask, another gentleman without a mask at the back, another gentleman at the back, uh, without a mask at the front. They're all near police officers that are wearing masks, male and female. So, at 5.45, a man walks onto the bandstand and says he wants to make a speech in front of the quiet crowd. So, before this time, everything was quiet. Only 10 police officers remember 15 minutes beforehand. Everything was going tickety-boo. It was a vigil. It was being respected. It was being treated as such. Right? So, this man, without a mask, he begins shouting angrily about the death of Sarah and the coronavirus restrictions. Almost like the political activist is actually trying to use a death to be able to politicise his point on restrictions and protests. Interesting how people seem to gravitate to use their own political ideologies to try and use any sort of tragedy to push their narrative. But luckily enough, the women that are actually there to do the vigil actually promote people to start booing, some of them saying shut up, chance of it's not your place ring out from the crowd, which prompts the man to begin his angry tirade again. Again, I think that this was done by political activists. I don't actually even think that this was necessarily done by feminist movements, by the way. I think this was more of a, um, should we say a ploy by people that are angry about coronavirus restrictions to be able to take their frustrations out and gather in the street and take their frustrations out on the police. I think that this was hijacked by people that are more angry at coronavirus restrictions than Sarah Evard's death. And I think that's absolutely disgusting, to be honest with you. So let's, let's carry on. Now, as you can see, the amount of people that are there at this minute in time. Some wearing masks, some not wearing masks. Luckily enough, most of them seem to be wearing masks at that time, but these are amounts of people that are gathered together. I would say that there's at least four or 500 people that are gathered there, and I would estimate that as a downgrade. And they're all standing shoulder to shoulder. They're all doing what they want to do, which is pay tribute to Sarah Everard, and I completely understand that. But remember that the restrictions are into place. And that needs to be put into consideration about how the police would actually deal with this. So, let's actually read on, shall we? So, at 6pm, a moment of silence is held in memory of Sarah. The crowd has grown to more than 500 people and the police presence is increasing too. Remember before, at this point in time, if there were still only 10 police officers and there was, was only 500 people, that means that those police officers would have to contend with 50 people per police officer if that was still only 10 officers. Just so the maths works out there. So now we have more people. Again, she's not wearing a mask, as you can quite rightly see. There's another lass at the front that's not wearing a, a mask and standing shoulder to shoulder again. So... The restrictions are not being upheld. People are shoulder to shoulder rather than doing a social distancing. Now, I understand that people wanted to pay their tributes and go to the vigil, which is absolutely fine. But again, I think this is where it comes to being hijacked by political activists. And this time, I do think that this was more to do with the feminist activists in this instance than what it was to do with the right wing activists or the anti-coronavirus restrictions activists should we say so that let's carry on i've given my freeze up so let's carry on some in the crowd begin chanting sister united we never be defeated while placards are held up saying we will not be silenced and she was just walking home a few minutes later local councillor on stage urges people to be leaving few respond so already there's a trend here that one, the messaging seems to be at a place of Americanized language. She was just walking home, as we were seeing with her Black Lives Matter and so on and so forth, about how they were saying that they would just be walking home or they were just sleeping, using that sort of uh, terminology to be able to moralize what was going on. And then as well, you also have the point of a local councillor that is starting to urge people to go home at this point in time or at least to start to disperse. Because as 
unfortunately the COVID restrictions are in place and you have almost 500 people that are actually counted at this point in time or as stated by Sky News well over 500 people again whether or not you believe in the restrictions again I do it is a case of if you are going to apply the restrictions you need to apply them evenly and respectfully to everybody and that's regardless of what you think is a just cause and isn't a just cause because anybody could have the idea of what is just to them you have to apply it evenly while we're under a pandemic so let's continue so as you can see this is highlighted where police officers are you have a couple up there in the top you have two over there another two over there another one there four there two there one two one two so you don't really have too many police officers to deal with the idea of let's say 500 people that was done before so let's carry on and see what's going on area pictures show the scale of the crowds around the bandstand with the police presence highlighted but tensions are starting to grow as it gets dark because now the activists are now taking place there's over 500 people that are in this place at the minute there are probably only around about 20 maybe 30 at a push if you wanted to try and say that there was more going but probably 20 police officers that are there to deal with these 500 people again that means one copper for every 25 people if the math works out properly not particularly a great way of being able to uh, usher people in and make sure that people are safe but I think that's one of the reasons why it was uh, unfortunately blown out of control and why the police may have acted in the way that they did. Again, that's not a justification either. I, I do think that they overreacted, but I do want to point out the fact of there is only one officer per 25 people and there was a massive group of people and they have started to be asked to go home and disperse at this point, just to reiterate that. So at 6.27pm, a group of people on the bandstand who are leading chants from the crowd are asked to leave by police liaison officers. So people that are, let's be honest and say agitators or as um, the old right used to say, the provocateurs of this movement or this protest that's now starting to erupt or this crowd seems to have... Uh, been asked to leave because they were starting to rile people up so i can't really say that that's a bad thing i think that that was a good technique to be able to try and ask the people that are starting to cause a bit more noise in the crowd to be asked to leave or to remove them to stop them from being agitators and provocateurs so i think that's a good thing from the police so the officers say that covid19 restrictions are being broken remember 500 people at least from half past five by sky news's own count well over 500 they said that are standing shoulder to shoulder now you could argue that it's for a good cause but if you're going to have the restrictions put into place then it needs to be put into place evenly now at this point in time i do not actually think that the police had a problem too much if i'm going to put my own uh, opinion onto it the amount of people that are actually there I think it more comes to a point of the police are trying to say, look, it's now coming up to half past six. There's quite a lot of you. It's it's time to go, so to speak. And personally, I think that they had every right to do that. But let's carry on reading. Unfortunately, their requests go unheard and the police continue to try to talk to the group at the front of the bandstand. So the police at this point in time at 6.30ish are still trying to talk to the protesters at this point, in my opinion, and trying to get them to disperse, go home, or at least adhere to the actual restrictions they put into place. Remember, the main reason why this vigil and protest was actually request denied by the police was because of fears of something like this actually happening. And I think their fears were, well, to be honest, well-founded. Or would you guys agree or disagree with me? Let me know down in the chat if you think I'm being overly nice to the police at this point in time. Or do you think I'm actually giving a fair account of what the police had to deal with at this point? Remember, I'm not somebody that's uh, completely a lover of the police officers and how police deal with everything at every time. But, you know, if you've got one copper for every 25 people, 
it's kind of hard to try and keep um, law and order or at least peace, especially when you have these protests that are starting to be agitated by professionals, in my opinion. But let's, let's carry on. So the crowd is starting to sh shout out, shame on you, and shouting out the police trying to remove women at bandstand. Or, as we literally just were told, they were asked to move the people at the front to try and get them to go home to try and disperse, to try and stick with the COVID regulations. So let's, let's carry on. At 6.33, the police presence visibly grows because people were not actually listening to the police and them asking them to disperse and start to go home. So almost an hour or at least half an hour, let's say, let's be generous, half an hour after they were asked by 10, maybe 20 officers to start to move on because of COVID restrictions, remembering that a politician, a councillor, a local councillor that was there, also asked them to start going because of COVID restrictions. This is when things started to get a little bit tetchy. You had half an hour of the coppers telling people to go home nicely, and they're not going home. At that point in time, what are the police supposed to do? And no, that does not give them free range to go and start smacking heads or anything, and that's not what my argument is. But if they are there to enforce the laws, and we have code of restrictions in place, and they need to follow that, then what do you expect them to do? And maybe that there lies the problem, that people knew that they were actually going to have to do something, and maybe that's why things happened. So one officer can be held telling the group, you need to encourage people to go home. Oh, that doesn't seem that it's a case of them grabbing people off of the street and beating them, does it? That still sounds like half an hour after they first started asking people to go home, they're still trying to tell people to go home. He later adds, this is no longer a vigil, it's an unlawful gathering. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Remember, at 6.33, people are still piling in. People are still shoulder to shoulder. People are still not all wearing masks. These are all regulations that are being broken. People are starting to get angry. They're giving voices about how they want to go against COVID restrictions. You had a gentleman that was already up there that was shouting the odds about COVID restrictions, using Sarah Everard's death to try and promote the idea of him being able to go against COVID restrictions. So... I'm not sure that this is a feminist problem in that they caused anything. I actually think that this comes to a point of agitators that are using this as an excuse to fight against the police. But those are my opinions. What do you actually think? And let me know down in the comment section about what do you think. Do you think that this was kind of hijacked or do you think that it was just a natural progression of what was going on? Remembering that we're not finished yet. So... He continues, the police officer, after saying that this we're in the middle of a pandemic, you're going to get more police officers coming up here. So he's telling the people that, look, if you don't move, he's warning them, right? Giving a lawful warning that if you don't start moving and start dispersing, we're going to have to be getting more police officers to come to this area so we can disperse you. I, I mean... I'm kind of stupid, but even I get that if a police officer is telling you to move on, and if you don't, there's going to be more police officers, you might want to move on because they're going to move you along. But to the surprise of no one, there are boos, jeers, and shouts of shame on you from the crowd as Met police officers walk onto the bandstand. And at 6.48... So another 15 minutes-ish after the last time. The bandstand is almost surrounded by officers. Over the next half an hour, the atmosphere becomes more hostile and police move on to the bandstand. So from 6.48, almost 10 to 7, half an hour later, at around about 20 past 7, or whatever, they're still asking generously people to move on they're asking people to move on this is almost an hour and a half after they first initially started to tell people to go home 
and then warning that if you don't go home, we're going to get more police officers in to be able to start moving you off. I mean, again, I'm not stupid, ladies and gentlemen, or maybe I am, but even I can work out the fact of, you know, if the police are telling you to move on, and they're saying, look, if you don't move on, we're going to get more of us to move you along. Again, I know this is reiteration, but you might want to move along. You've been warned. So it is utterly maddening scenes. The police appear to be dispersing the vigil at Clapham Common. Chance of let her speak in the crowd and who do you protect? Who do you serve? Are being chanted in the scenes at around about 6.49. So remember, at least, or almost, should I say, two hours after they first started to say to people, go home, you are breaching COVID restrictions. So it wasn't a case that you weren't allowed to do the vigil. It was a case of how many people were in the place that are now using this as a protest to protest the police, to protest feminist rights and female rights and good on them, so they should do and other people that are protesting against the COVID restrictions. Now, whatever you believe on that one, it's a case of they were protesting at that point. It is no longer a vigil. You can argue that, oh, well, it was a vigil. Yeah, it was. But up until they start throwing placards and start throwing s signs and signals at the police officers and chanting at the police officers, it kind of becomes a protest, doesn't it? So when people say that they disperse it a vigil, I would like to say that, no, they didn't. They were actually dispersing a protest that was illegally formed, especially under the COVID restrictions. But, hey, let's continue. So, at 7.08, Patsy Stevenson, who is on the bandstand, addresses the crowd and tells the police to go home. So, <laughs> so an hour and a half, right, or just over an hour and a half, the police are telling people to go home, and if you don't go home, we're going to get more police. Half an hour later, at 6.30ish, they start telling people, we're going to get more police, you need to start going home. At 7.08, they are now saying to the police, no, we're staying here, you go home. I mean, at this point, that's a sit-in, that's a protest, it's not a vigil. So using a loudspeaker, she says, are we going to leave and go home? A shout from the crowd of, no, is heard from the people in the crowd. Are you sure? Miss Stephen adds, yes, the crowd responds. So Miss Stephen then says, then the police should go home. I'm done with being bullied by police. Interesting that, isn't it? That the vigil that is supposed to be for Sarah Everard's memory is now being tarnished to say that we're going to go against the police. The police that have been there all day, that have only had a presence of 10 officers for most of the day, that have been respectful to people, that have let people lay wreaths, let people lay flowers, so on and so forth. But as soon as people have been starting to told that you're starting to breach COVID restrictions by having almost over 500 people, shoulder to shoulder, not all wearing masks, People wonder why the police are starting to go, it's time to go home or dispersed. Especially when you actually have it changing, the atmosphere changing, to becoming a full-blown protest. And the protest is against the police. And in turn, the restrictions, I suppose. But mostly against the police. We're no longer going to get bullied by the police, she says. So, 7.20... A woman is seen being shoved forcefully in the back by two officers after being lifted from her knees. So she's sitting down, being asked to leave, I presume, and she's not moving. So they lift her up and push her back to try and push her back, so on and so forth. Admittedly, I think that this was too far and they shouldn't have done that. But the officers are still trying to disperse the crowd. Now that the crowd is also trying to turn their ire towards the police and all of their anger for whatever they have thought or think about what's going on for Sarah Everard and other activist ideas, the police are now the targets. Remember, there's not that many police there either to try and actually defend themselves at this point either. So the woman also says that she's trying to uh, retrieve her glasses. 
So again, I don't agree with what the police were doing here, but you have to understand the context is what's going on. It's not that the police were just removing her. People were shouting at the police. People were telling them to go home. There's anger. There's vitriol going towards the police. Their whole anger is being pushed towards the police at this point in time. It wasn't a quiet time, so to speak. It wasn't a let's pay our respects to Sarah Everard. At that point, it was a, we're going to moan and shout at the police. Which, again, they have every right to do when we're not in a pandemic. But let's, let's carry on. So at 7.21, the Met Police warn the gathering at Clapham Common is unsafe and urge people to go home. So now, almost two hours after half past five, when they first started to tell people go home because it was a breach of COVID restrictions, they are now making it official by a Twitter post and actually putting it out as a statement that it is now unsafe for the vigil and the gathering. In actual fact, they actually don't even use the word vigil, they use gathering. Because at this point in time, under my interpretation, it's no longer... It's no longer a vigil. It's a protest. We're going to sit in, we're going to moan at the police, we're going to shout at the police and tell them we're going to be politically active to make a political point. That, by definition, ladies and gentlemen, is a protest. But let's, let's carry on. 7.22. Met police officers grab women stood within the bandstand before leading them away to screaming and shouting from onlookers. Watch the video next. We will not be watching the video. I do not agree with what the police officers did at that point in time. I do not agree with what they did. So we will not be watching the video. So at 7.22, among those arrested is Patsy Stevenson. Now, Patsy Stevenson, if you remember correctly, was the woman that had the megaphone that was shouting about, we're not gonna go home, the police should go home. So when they say that she's an innocent bystander, no, she was what you would call a political activist, an agitator, or in turn, a provocateur. So when they say Patsy Stevens is, oh, she was terrified of the police officer, I'm sorry, she knew exactly what she was doing as she was being an agitator. She was being a provocateur. And if she didn't, if you thought that uh, <laughs> she had no media training, uh, amazing how she was able to look straight into the camera, why the police seem to be uh, really pinning her down there while they handcuff her. Seems that they're being really forceful in that picture, doesn't it? So this is quotations from uh, Patsy Stevenson's. I just stood there and the police officer was pulling my arm, trying to get my name, and then I was tackled to the ground, she said. Yes, the person that was using a megaphone to say we're not going home, the police should go home, wasn't doing anything. Honest officer, not doing a ting. So, as I was being taken away, behind me, one of the officers that was holding on to me was saying, I've got my hand on my baton, I've got my hand on my baton to one of the off other officers. Now, very interesting, they're walking her away in a place that is very angry, that people are shouting, throwing stuff at the police, and yet she thinks that she's the one that they're going to use the baton on. Interesting uh, turn of internalizations there, isn't it? So let's, let's carry on, shall we? Again, they seem to really be dragging her away and pinning her down there, don't they? It still seems that she's um, looking at cameras and shouting the odds, so to speak. But let, let's carry on. I thought this was terrifying because we're about to walk into a crowd of people and I don't know whether the crowd are going to go against what's going on and me be arrested. I mean, you aggravated the crowd. And you wondered why they arrested you and you wondered why the crowd may or may not be agitated to attack the police. I mean, again, I'm a little bit stupid, but I think I can see a logical train actually happening here. But let's, let's carry on. So at 7.37, chance of all cops are 
uh, the B word, if you wanted to say that, all directed towards officers on the bandstand. So again, this has now turned into a massive protest. This is no longer a vigil. We have slogans being chanted. I have uh, A cabs. So it's interesting, isn't it, how all the political terminology that have come from America is now being used in England. Very interesting that, isn't it? How rhetoric seems to transcend the Atlantic. But let's carry on. A woman confronts one officer and says, you are the problem. Yes, them being peaceful all day and only allowing 10 officers all day for an actual peaceful vigil is them that is the problem. And then after almost two hours of actually trying to get people to go home from around about five o'clock to about six, let's say two hours and a half if you want to, is a case of them now, they're the problem? After they've been trying to tell people, look, this is a case of breaching COVID restrictions, apparently the police are the problem. Now, don't get me wrong, the police are not the best in the world. And I don't think that they handled this situation the best that they could. But let's kind of put things into context here. There wasn't a large number of police to begin with. They had to call in reinforcements, so to speak, because there was massive amounts of people, remembering over 500 people, shoulder to shoulder, not all wearing masks, screaming and shouting at the police for them to go home because they're going to stay there. Without the fact of them even talking about COVID restrictions, without the fact of them being shown how they were fighting and throwing stuff against the police. And again, this isn't a case of me trying to bootlick for the police. I don't like the way that the police treated the protesters. But you have to remember the context in which this was done. So, a large group of officers walk through the crowd. Boos are heard and someone shouts, F you, while a voice believed to be an officer says, stay in formation. Two people are arrested and taken towards the police fans. Now, I will play this video, not because... I actually want to be on the police's side, but I want to show how I think that the political activists, the provocateurs, were the ones that hijacked the actual vigil. I think that this was and is hijacked, so I will quickly play this video for you. So, as I said, I wanted to make sure that you guys all saw that I'm not trying to do this one way. I'm not trying to say that, hey, the police are all the good here or anything else like that. I I'm trying to prove a point that I think that the vigil itself for the people that went there for the vigil were treated with respect, were treated great, were treated how they should be. But as soon as people start shouting to the police, we're not going home after being asked to go home by councillors as well as the police for over two hours asked to go home, it comes to a point of it's no longer a vigil. It comes to a point of it being a protest. And it also comes to the point of me showing you these groups of men, and yes, it is men, that are agitating and trying to be provocateurs to the police to try and get them to react and overreact to what's going on. Again, showing people are pushing, pulling the police, throwing stuff at them, calling them names, so on and so forth. Again, it's not to say that the police were right in how they reacted. I don't think that it is, and I'm not trying to protect the police on that side. I'm trying to show it in an even light, that the way that the vigil was handled, after around about 7 o'clock, didn't really go to the police's plan, I don't think. But I think that that has to do with limited amount of numbers that they had in a short amount of time it would have taken for more police officers to get there. Again, remembering that if you only had 20 police officers and 500 people, you had one officer for every 25 people. So not really a good way of being able to, um, should we say, look after crowd and doing crowd control. So let's, let's carry on. 
So let's go on to 745. There is a banging on a police van where someone is being held inside. Footage shows the letters ACAB, meaning, as we said before, all co cops are B-word, have been spray painted on the vehicle. Again, does that sound like it's a vigil? Or does that sound like that's a form of a protest? Does it sound that that's being respectful and the police overreacting? Or does it sound that there's activists there? And does it sound that there's provocateurs there that are trying to cause a scene, that are trying to cause the police to go out of their way to hurt and arrest people, to try and make them... Well, I don't suppose that they actually need to try. They, they looked absolutely horrible after 7 o'clock. So, I'm with you. It's just interesting how people are saying this is just a vigil, but yet yeah, you have all the signs of protests and attacks on the police. So, just saying. So, let's play the video of the coppers protecting the van. Why? Well, let's just play the video rather than me trying to poison the well, eh? So, on that, you had people that were blocking the way of the van, and the police were pushing people out of the way so the police could take somebody away. At that point, the people were actually infringing on the police business, should I say. So, it's very interesting that they are trying to go against the police in this, when all they're doing was their job and trying to take somebody who they've arrested away. I'm pretty sure that they would have asked them to disperse, and I'm pretty sure that they would have not dispersed. The police don't generally just push people out of the way. Not generally. But I could be wrong. Maybe they did just push people out of the way. So 8pm, almost three hours again from 5pm when they started to tell people to go home. Remember, 5pm, so half past five, you had police officers asking people to go home. From half past five, they were asking people that if you don't go home we're going to have more police officers here and then it getting worse and worse because people weren't going home people turned against the police they started saying that they were going to stay here and the police should go home so on and so forth being agitators being provocateurs so on and so forth and i don't know maybe i'm looking at it from a one-sided prison but i do think that the police had justification for doing what they did now, I don't think that they're condoned in every way that they actually treated the people. But if they have restrictions and laws to follow, then they had the laws to follow. It's not like they just went out with their batons and started beating people. They gave people a, over an hour and a half to start dispersing. Then they had people starting to attack them, starting to verbally attack them, as well as physically attack them, trying to push and pull them, so on and so forth. But the way that the media in themselves overall, not this necessarily, but overall have tried to paint them, especially Labour politicians at the minute, have tried to paint them as a fact of them being evil and went out of the way to cause all the problems, is completely and utterly false and just hogwash. Now again, I think that there should be an investigation on how the police treated them. I really do. I don't think that the police treated protesters in the right way and not how the, our police should be treating people. But again, there is context and there is a two-way street in this. It wasn't a case of it being, oh, well, they just broke up a vigil. No, they were actually dealing with people that were protesting against them, throwing stuff against them, that were being verbally abusive towards them and directing their anger and hatred towards the police. So what do the experts say? Police an analyst Graham Wetton, or Wetterton? <laughs> a former public order officer said any decision on whether police should step back and allow a gathering to take place would not be one for officers on the ground to make. In other words, he was saying that the officers that were told to actually get there and do what was going on, or just leaving, were made by higher-ups, not just the police. So he told Sky News, after six hours, it was clear and apparent a small group turned up intent on confronting with the police. 
I completely and utterly agree with this, gentlemen, and I'm not even a uh, an analyst or anything else like that. I, I do think that the whole vigil was completely and utterly hoodwinked, hijacked by these group of agitators that were trying to again hijack it for their own political points and own political point scorings trying to go against the police trying to go against the coronavirus trying to go against the restrictions and so on and so forth i don't think that this necessarily was all to do with sarah evard and all of the instances that go with it i do think that there are issues that are with it and we definitely need to address most of the issues that unfortunately affect women at a higher rate than it does men I really do mean that. We need conversations and we need to talk about that. This video is not about that. So I do think that it had come to a point where people were using this as a opportunity to get themselves onto the news and be able to push their own political narratives. Um, for instance, Stevenson... Um, Taking a big old megaphone and shouting out, we're not going home, the police should go home, and so on and so forth. And then somehow winding up as the poster child for the protest kind of doesn't seem um, coincidental. As well as all the men that are turning up talking about coronavirus and then having attacks against the police. That doesn't seem coincidental or a normal occurrence, so to speak. Uh, I mean, he goes on to talk about, I can almost picture the decision in the control room by the commanders of the event. It's now moved from being a vigil to being an assembly with people giving speeches. Where the Met ha may have got it wrong on Saturday, they didn't communicate that on social media through the media to the public. I completely and utterly agree. I think that the media themselves have hijacked the idea of it being a vigil, not understanding that what's happened is it turned from being a vigil into a protest and being anger and heartfelt towards the police. And I think that's where the disconnect goes on. Most people don't have a problem with the vigil. In fact, even 10 officers were only there for the vigil for all of the day. But as soon as people started turning up in their numbers and in their droves, and as soon as it all started changing, the police changed tack. It's almost like they reacted to a situation rather than them actually being the catalyst for the situation. But those are just my opinions, and I'm just some random guy on the internet. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you feel in the comment section down below. I am the Common Sense Guy. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and listen to me. I appreciate it. Take care. See you all again real soon. Bye-bye for now.